Frank. Frank! He tried to say something. Frank, can you hear me? It's Jill. Do you hear me? He's coming too. I'll get Dr. Coleridge. No, get my father, Dr. Coleridge. Frank, try to stay awake. Please, try to stay awake. Oh, so Dr. Coleridge did find me some space, huh? Well, it isn't a Waldorf, but it's all right. <laughs> I guess it wasn't as hard for him to make room for you as he thought. Well, it just goes to show what a little perseverance can do for you. Oh, say congratulations. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. I'm happy for me, too. Hey, sit down. Hey, I've got us some fantastic croissants oh. and some coffee from across the street at oh. Ryan's Bar. Thank you. But the word's out all over the floor. What word? Uh, Dr. Nell Bolak has joined the radiology staff, and that her famous husband, Dr. Seneca Bolak, is here, too. Was here. Was gone already? Well, as far as I know, he's on a plane back to Minneapolis at this very moment. Sorry I missed him. Sort of, sort of a fast trip, wasn't it? Well, there was no point in him staying around. Did he give you a rough time? A little more than I expected. He got here last night. He was waiting in my hotel room for me. <laughs> He didn't waste any time coming after you, did he? Seneca's always been a man of action. There's no question about that. Uh, did he try to get you to go back with him? He made a valiant effort. He offered to wind up his work in Minnesota and uh, come back east with me in six months, if I went home with him first. Was that such a bad offer? Darling, that's what he's been saying for three long years. If I'd said yes, we'd be doing this all over again in six months, and uh, he'd be making more promises that he couldn't keep. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry, too. If Seneca had been willing to come back east with me, we could have given our marriage another chance. But he wasn't willing to do that. It was his work and on his terms. I can't fight that. I don't have the time or energy anymore. I want to get on to my own work now. Couldn't you have your work and Seneca? I wish I could. I've never liked endings. But sometimes you have to have endings before you can have beginnings. And I'm starting something new today. You sound so lonely. Well, it will be for a while. But I know that I'll be regaining a sense of myself that's been missing for a, a very long time. I hope you're right. Don't be sad for me, Bucky. I feel very positive about it, really. Was I looking sad? A little. Well, I guess I was thinking about endings and beginnings, too. They can be good when you know they're right. <laughs> yes, I know. Last night I had what I thought was a terrific beginning, and this morning it already seems to be an ending. Oh, dear. What happened? Well, you know that intern I was telling you about, Faith Coleridge? Yes, of course. We had this great evening together. She came to my houseboat, and I made her dinner, and uh, I had the most fantastic feeling of being really comfortable with her, like we were really connecting, you know? Mm -hmm. In fact, I felt so comfortable that I forgot to worry about how I was doing or what she thought <laughs> of me. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, it was terrific. But this morning, I blew it. How? Well... <laughs> Oh, I put an orchid in her mailbox with a note. Oh, Bucky, that's terrific. Yeah, she didn't think so. She thought it was presumptuous. Well, what's presumptuous about that? 
Well, she let me know right away that she only wanted to be friends. Oh, good heavens, what did you put in the note? Nothing. I mean, <laughs> I mean nothing dramatic. I didn't ask her to marry me or anything. But she laid it right on the line. She doesn't want to get seriously involved with anyone right now. And that is what you had in mind? Well, I had a little more than a platonic relationship in mind, yeah. Except that's all she's interested in. Well, I wouldn't be too discouraged. A lot of lovers start out as friends. It's just a pity they can't stay that way. <sighs> well... If she's not interested in me, I'm not gonna push it. I can't believe what I just heard. Both sides of our family have always felt that the harder the problem, the harder you fight. Every family has his black sheep. Oh, Bucky, you've never been a quitter. If you were, you, you'd never have gotten into med school, and you certainly wouldn't have made it through. You're far too stubborn to give up easily on anything. Except girls. They're not exactly lining up out there. <laughs> well, then they don't know what they're missing. <sighs> Now, if you just gave Faith Coleridge a chance to really get to know you, she'd find you absolutely irresistible. <laughs> well, at least there are two women in the world who appreciate me. But why do they have to be my mother and my aunt? <laughs> <laughs> and do you know why we appreciate you? You're prejudiced. No, because we know you better than anyone else. Oh, and to know me is to love me. Precisely. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well... Maybe I'm not the answer to every girl's dreams, but I guess I have something to offer. Of course you do. I sure like to offer to Faith Coleridge. Well, then, I think you should go right ahead and offer it. <laughs> okay, I'm now. I'll hang in there. Good. I will, too. <laughs> Try to stay awake. Frank! Jill, what's going on? Mary, I think he's coming, coming to you. He tried to say something. Frank? It's Mary. Frank! Are you sure? We thought so. The nurse heard him, too. She's gone for my father. What was he trying to say? He, he asked for Delia. Oh, please, please wake up. Frank! Frank, open your eyes. Mary's here. I'm here, too. I think he's coming to ask for Delia. Excuse me, Mary. Let's have a look. Frank! Can you hear me, Frank? Frank! some response to sound. Let me see his chart. If he's trying to wake up, that means he's better, doesn't it? Well, let's hope so, Mary. Oh, please, God. I see he has slight fever. This reading was 20 minutes ago? Yes, sir. Frank, if you can hear me, blink your eyes. Frank! Conscious for a minute, wasn't he? There was some response. Look, may I ask you two to step outside? I want to take his temperature and check his reflexes again. Oh, of course. Are you sure he was asking for Delia? Well, he said her name a couple of times. She wasn't here. Do you think we should call her? Well, as soon as your father's finished, I'll go over and tell the whole family. Mary, I hope you don't mind my being here. Oh, Jill, of course not. I'm glad you're here. 
just don't understand how this, this could happen. I, I just can't believe it. He's going to be all right, though. How are your mother and dad this morning? They're okay. Keeping as busy as possible. And I wish I knew what I could do for them. If you think of anything... I'll tell you. You know, I've always admired Frank tremendously. And you know how I feel about your whole family? I've, I've always envied your closeness, especially yours and Frank's. <laughs> Roger and I, we... We never managed to relate to each other the way you and Frank do. Oh, listen, you should be very proud of your brother. We're all terribly grateful to him for the way he handled things when he found Frank. Oh. <laughs> Roger may have some shortcomings as a brother, but he is a brilliant doctor. Did Frank ever tell you that you were his favorite teacher in law school? Yes, he, he said something to that effect. He used to tell me that you could make the simplest negligence case seem as interesting as a Supreme Court decision. I have to admit, he was my favorite student. Do you want to come in now? How is he, Ed? Well, he has a slight fever. I'm not sure what it means yet, but I'm going to order chest x-rays. Why? Well, we want to be sure that he's not developing pneumonia. Do you think he might be? There's frequently low-grade fever following surgery. Let's hope that's what this is. But if this is pneumonia, that could mean... We'll it... deal with it. You'll tell me as soon as you know. Of course. You think I should tell Mother and Dad? Well, there's nothing to tell them yet. Let's get the x-rays first. Okay, sure. I'll be in Dr. Bullock's office. All right, Dad. There are so many things I have to tell him when he wakes up. All the letters and the phone calls. All the people who've offered their support in the campaign. People I never dreamed we could count on. Oh, Mary, that's wonderful. We've got to keep the campaign going. Even if it means he's in bed through the election. He doesn't take office until January anyway. I want to help with the campaign. You know that. You just tell me how. Do you think you could contact all the lawyers in the district? Sure, it's a great idea. And I'll offer A's to all my law students who'll get out and solicit votes for Frank. <laughs> oh, terrific. Between the two of us, we'll start a landslide. Mary. Frank. Settle, Dr. Bolak? Yes, thank you. Your son gave me a very complete tour of the hospital. It's even better equipped than I'd remembered. Well, I'm glad you approve. There's some reference materials I'll need um, until my own library arrives and some desk supplies. Whom should I see about that? Well, if you give a list to my secretary, she'll take care of it for you. Fine, thank you. Well, uh, I have a patient I'd like an X-ray on as soon as possible. Well, I'd be happy to take it for you, Doctor, if I could find out when the X-ray room is available. Uh, the department coordinator wasn't at her desk. No one seems to know where she is or what today's schedule is. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear from her. Well, you won't need an x-ray room for this patient. He can't be moved. You'll have to get a portable machine and take it to his room. Why can't he be moved? Well, his neck is braced. Oh. He fell down a flight of stairs here a few days ago and sustained a hairline skull fracture and a C3 displacement. We uh, aspirated a hematoma in the area of the fractured vertebra and discovered a marked softening of the spinal cord. I see. Well, the last chest x-rays were negative, but he's running a fever now, and, well, you know how fast these pneumonias can develop. Is he comatose? Yes, he, uh, he showed a slight response to loud sounds a moment ago, but he seems to have slipped under again. I see. Well, uh, are those his previous x-rays? Oh, yes, I meant to give them to you. Frank Ryan, I, I think I've heard Dr. Carter mention him. It, isn't he a brother of one of your interns? Yes. Well, is that why you seem so disturbed? There's more than that. I, uh, I probably shouldn't even be on this case. Then why don't you turn it over to someone else? His family wouldn't want it. But if you feel that you can't be objective about it... Dr. Bolek, would you please just arrange for the x-rays? Yes, of course.
Yes, this is Dr. Bolak. Dr. Bolak. Uh, you weren't at your desk when Dr. Roger Coleridge and I stopped by your office. I've been expecting to hear from you. I joined the radiology staff this... Oh, you did. Well, that's good. How soon can I get a portable machine for a chest x-ray? Dr. Ed Coleridge. It's quite urgent. Thank you. Well, she'll call me right back. Oh, very good. Is Mr. Ryan a, a close friend? Hmm? Oh, yes, he's the oldest son of my best friend. Johnny Ryan and I go back a great many years to our boyhood, in fact. We, we grew up together in this neighborhood. No wonder it's been so difficult for you. In some ways, I, I feel I know Frank better than my own son. He was a tremendously open, engaging child. It, his mother said she knew he was destined for great things the moment he was born. Didn't I hear that he was running for political office? City councilman. He had everything going for him. A, a wife, a baby, a splendid future ahead of him. And now this. Does his family know how serious it is? No, I haven't kept anything from them. He, but they're the kind of people that won't allow themselves to believe he won't make it. They're, they're willing him to stay alive. You did the surgery yourself? Yes, I was here, and Johnny wanted me to do it. And you say that you um, expirated the hematoma successfully? That's right. Well, the skull fracture might not be too serious. Uh, it's hard to tell from this film how much damage was done to the cord, but you were in there, and you saw it, and uh, you said there was a marked softening. I'm afraid so. Well, then, even barring pneumonia or other complications is... Isn't it unlikely that uh, the case has a, has a favorable outcome? Maybe I am grasping at straws, but there is a possibility that when the swelling goes down, we'll discover that the damage wasn't as extensive as we thought. Well, I hope you're right. Excuse me. Dr. Bolak. All right, uh, the patient is Mr. Frank Ryan. Will you have the machine and plates delivered to his room? Well, thank you very much. And if you're going to be there for a while, I'll stop by to see you in a few minutes. Right. Goodbye. 20 minutes. Good. I'll have the film developed and have a report to you uh, as soon as the plates are dried. Thank you. I'll be in the office. Uh, Dr. Coleridge, I'm really very sorry about your friend. Uh, I realize you've been under a great deal of strain the last few days. I'm afraid I've added to it. You didn't know. No, but even if I had, I don't suppose I would have behaved any differently. My work here is the most important thing in my life to me now. I understand. I hope that your friend's son is going to be all right. Thank you. Frank, you can hear me, can't you? Oh, please, listen. You're going to be all right. You're in the hospital. You had a fall, but you're going to be all right. Ed Coleridge is on your case, and he thinks you're going to be just fine. I'm going to call Mother and Dad in a minute and tell them that you are awake. They're at home with Delia and little John, and they're all okay. Everybody at headquarters wants to be remembered to you. They're working so hard. I can't wait for you to see the posters. You're going to love them. Morty ran off 1,000 copies as a campaign contribution, and, and the kids are putting them up all over the district. Everybody thinks that the picture's just fantastic. Frank, try to open your eyes. Let me know that you can hear me. It's going to take a while for you to get your strength back, but all you need is rest. Frank, you don't have to try and say anything, but try to listen to me. Try to concentrate on my voice. It'll help you to stay awake. 
Jillian's here, and, and her father will be right back to check on you. He's really pleased with your progress. You woke up a little while ago and you asked for Delia. She'll be here soon. We all thought it would be better if she stayed at home with the baby, but she'll be here in just a little while. So will Mother and Dad. I'd call them now, but, but I want to stay with you. Could you understand what he said? Frank, we heard you, but would you say it again? Try to open your eyes, Frank. Can you see me? Oh, that's wonderful. You're looking right at me. What was it that you wanted to say? Say it once more, Frank. Try it again. Would you go and get your father? Yes, of course. Say it once more, Frank. Push. Push? Frank. Frank! In Port Charles, revenge is a priority, relationships are disposable, and good medical care is a necessity. Keep up with this fast-paced city with an all-new episode of General Hospital, weeknights at 10 on SoapNet.